Test. Test, test. Okay, my mic is amazingly well tuned. Music is a bit too quiet, but that's not the main problem. I would consider this testing successful. <laughs> yeah, that might be not safe. Hello everyone. Another time, another game to play. It's Crash Bandicoot. Uh, insane Trilogy. Uh, I've only done first half of the first game, so there's that. Been playing a different game actually, but I don't think I'm gonna stream that one because I'm quite far and... Frankly, I'm not about to play it from the beginning. I did have a game that I wanted to play October. Crash Bandicoot is not it. But it might still happen. Like, uh, well, actually, no, it won't happen because on Halloween I'm gone. Yeah, that's sad. Maybe a few days before Halloween I'll start playing it. We'll see. Time will tell. I don't want to promise anything. I just want to have a chill night with people who might or might not be watching this and just enjoy, you know, the rest of the evening or whatever time you have of the day. With that being said, let's just jump into it. Hello, everyone. You can't hear music, of course. Now you can. Um, I need to check one more thing. The volume of the game, uh, which is a painful process, but I'm hoping... Yeah, it's fine. I'm expecting uh, this to be one of the fewer checks. Um, as you know, OBS sort of keeps the settings set up for you. So there's that. And on top of all of that, I, I just can't be bothered anymore. I just want to play. So let's just jump into it. I'm going to move the screen closer to me. I've invested into like a beautiful monitor hand handle. So that I can move it around. So just give me one moment, I'll set it up. Yeah, I'm old enough, mom. I don't have to have... I can sit in front of the TV if I want to. I'm just gonna move it in closer. Yeah, I can't move any closer. And that's that. I hope everything is fine. And I can continue. Um, that. Beautiful. It's a perfect setup. As you can see, I have my lovely Yoshi in the background, still. 
And there we go. Um, last time we did the Lost City. Yeah. We're going on with this game. And after this level, I think we're having our first difficulty spike. Not this one, but the next one. We'll see. Yeah, this one's easy enough, I think. Oh, no. Okay. We've already hit that box, so that's good. It is a bit weird. My monitor's a bit down. I need to rotate it up. My eye level. I think now it's good. They said the curved monitor is amazing for gaming. I don't know if that's true, but I do feel a bit trippy. There we go. Again, I'm gonna try collecting all the boxes, but I can't promise anything. Um, Honestly, I want to go through all of the Crash games. I might even do like post post PS1 games. Okay, why did that happen? That was weird. Uh, which includes Crash of the Titans, Crash Mind of a Mutant, Twin Sanity and stuff. We'll see how that will go. Uh, maybe I'll only play the PSP ones, so Mind Over Mutants and all that. Obviously Crash 4, I will play that. Maybe some racing. Who knows, you know, just to do all the tracks and that will be fine. There's quite a lot of them, so honestly I can see that stream being quite long. Yeah, these... Ah, oh, fuck. I'm gonna try to stream for much less than before. I was also experimenting, or think having a thought experiment, that instead of doing like an actual playthrough of a game, I would just play a game. Sometimes I would stream it, sometimes I wouldn't, so you wouldn't sort of have the full playthrough. But you would have... You would have the sort of... You know, just chunks. Like, not too dis... Not, not, oh, fuck. Not chunks that are too disconnected, but you wouldn't have, like, let's say, full gameplay preview. So a game like Persona would, for example, have, like, five streams or something where we would be at different chunks of the game. So that would kind of solve the problem of me playing through the game while also not having to stream every second of it because that is time-consuming and... I think I realized that streaming is not something I have a lot of time to dedicate to. Maybe I should just not play games that dedicate a lot of time. And that require a lot of time. Which is another way of looking at things, I know. No matter. Point is... Um, where was I? Yeah. Point is, I just want to play games casually on these streams. I'm not going to do like full play through playthroughs. Maybe for some games like Metroid or something that I'm really interested in, I'll do a full one. But for stuff like, let's say, I'm not sure, like, Persona or Hyrule Warriors or stuff like that, I would just do a chunk-based chunk playthrough kind of thing. It seems like an okay idea, in my opinion. Which way do we go now? Yeah, this way. With that being said, I have two things that I want to actually kind of talk about. Interestingly enough, um... Apparently, China... I <laughs> hope this video is going to be demonetized already. No, not really. I'm not going to be, like, negative. YouTube has been serving me quite a lot of videos on Chinese politics and Chinese um, econ economy, as well as, like, Russian and all that. I don't know why it has been happening, but I've been getting a lot of it. Uh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily... Oh, we got all the boxes. Good. Not in a sense that it's... Like, all just positive and stuff, but rather it's very critical and constructive. So it's not like propaganda kind of videos. It's, it's very interesting because I would expect if someone would be like, you know, trying to push their videos, say Chinese government or something, you would expect there to be a lot of, you know, positive trades and all that, but I'm not getting that, so I, that's excluding the influence from that direction. I don't know, maybe I'm just interested in world kind of politics and stuff. Mind you, it's not only Chinese stuff, it's also like United States and UK and European stuff as well. It's very interesting. Serves as a good sort of a podcast. Oh yeah, I've heard nightmares of this level. Okay. But it's, it's, it's interesting. 
But staying on top of the topic of China, I didn't know that there was or is going to be a Steam version of a Steam version for China or something like that. Which, I mean, it makes sense when you think about it, but it's still kind of weird. With obvious exclusions from titles that display certain topics, and I'm not going to elaborate any further. But I think if you know the politics behind that side of the world and that particular gaming market, then you should realize what I'm talking about. It's weird. I'm not... There's so many stipulations for a game to be there. And I'm not sure whether that's a good thing for the entire market. I'm not saying only for the Chinese market. Like, let, fine, I guess. Chinese market can do whatever it wants. I may disagree with it, but in the end, who am I to dictate that, right? But when it comes to the rest of the world, I think the problem becomes clear that it is propagating to the rest of the world. So, who's to say? I mean, I still, um, it still amazes me that, like, one country is able to pay the entertainment of the entire world in a lot of ways. But I guess I shouldn't be surprised that has happened. It was bound to... That was also... I mean, when I think about it, it was happening all this time with US, right? With their movies and stuff. So it's not necessarily fair saying that it's only started happening now as, you know... It's been happening all this time. Just my two cents. Oh my, are you kidding me? Why would that be there? Oh my god, this level. Yeah, it's starting. This is the first difficulty spike. Fuck me. This is the first difficulty spike of the game, honestly. Are you kidding me? Stop it. Crash. I did land on it. Fuck this. I have 44 level uh, lives. 45 if I include the zero of the one. This better not be fucking bullshit. It's always weird how in Crash games, the zero of the life actually is counted as well. It's like, I, I, I believe that it probably was a mistake by like a programmer. Usually with arrays and stuff like that. So they like, instead of zero, they kind of compared it there. Not that it differentiates that much. It's probably like a one sign that's been wrong. In the first game, in 1996, and it kind of, you know, propagated itself as a crash way. This game looks fucking gorgeous on Switch. Yeah, the, le the resolution could be a bit better, like on PC and whatnot, it looks much better. But even for a Switch, this is a very beautiful game. Honestly, 42 boxes. Are we able to... Oh yeah, these things. <sighs> I know now how to deal with you. Yeah, this first game, let's be honest, is terrible. With its level design in some cases, yeah. Kind of was expecting that to not be... Yeah, there's a lot of boxes behind the checkpoint. How many? Six, was it? Nah. The tea tastes kind of weird. But it's fine. Anyway, we did our first difficulty spike level. And now we're doing... We're actually almost on the third island of the game. Which is the last one. We'll see how far we'll go. Honestly, I'll probably do like all three games to some extent. Although, I'm not going to collect all the boxes in the first one. Like, I'm trying to do my best, but... Uh, I might consider doing the gem run of the second game, or the third game. No, just the second game, because I could not be bothered doing the relics, the time-based challenges of Crash. Maybe I won't even do the 100% run on Crash 2. We'll see, we'll see. I probably will, though. Because Crash 2's boxes are very fun to collect. Like, some of the levels are just so well designed around that particular mechanic that it has that much more additional depth. Okay. So far, this is easy. Also, Crash Bandicoot is... M Crash Bandicoot 2 is more be is much better overall than the first one. It was my first Crash game as well, which I'm sure I've mentioned at least a few times, but still. Titans would be a fun thing to play. I mean, 
obviously there's the Pokemon games that are on my backlog, so that those will be played soon enough, once they come out of course. But I'm I'm I wanna know like whether I'm gonna probably like do for, maybe those will be the candidates for like, you know uh, for the partial kind of playthrough. So it will be more like, you know, some chunks of the game will be shown on the stream, some I'll be playing on my own. That'll be better, maybe. Sooner I can have a more better time actually solving the things here. Yeah, uh, whenever I see this uh, gem outline, I know for a fact that we're not going to be able to get all the boxes of the level. Okay, how many did I miss? Yeah. I forgot which button speeds them up. Well, 18 boxes. That's still better than 20. I don't know if uh, why 20 was the number that came up to mind, but it's better than that. Sun service. Oh no, this is one of the longest levels in the game, isn't it? Well, no matter. It's still not the DLC level that got added. I'll probably do that one. That would be a fun stream of trying to collect that special gem for that particular one. Yeah, I don't really like first Crash Bandicoot game that much. Like, it's fine. It's a good platformer, I guess. But I just, the level themes are too boring to me. Like, yeah, tribal islands. Wow, great, whatever. Not interesting enough. That's why I like the second and third one more. Because the level themes get very interesting. By the third one, it gets extremely interesting. And the fourth one just goes wild. Oh my god, are you kidding me? You can't spin them out. That's interesting. Oh well. Luckily, this is not one of those levels that you have to do like very carefully. Because there is one of these particular side-scrolling levels where you have to do it without dying to get the gem. As well as to get all the boxes. It's part of the color gems challenge. Which, this is, the, this is one of the few reasons why I'm not dealing with that. Because it's just so difficult. I think the... This, well, the DLC level is one, but the same kind of style level is also a colored gem level. Which just means that... And it's not as difficult, but it's very difficult as well to get all the boxes in it without dying once. So, I mean, I've done it. I do have a 100% finished profile on Crash Bandicoot 1. But it's not something I'll recommend anyone else pursuing. Honestly, your effort is better being pursued on the fuck me second game. Okay, perfect. I did, ah, suck a dick. It's such bullshit. Honestly, there's so much detail though. Like, the particles and stuff. I'm surprised. How well that is handled. 52. At least our level count is not net, ne ne net negative, which means we get more lives in a level than we lose in general. Oh my god, that was such a dumb mistake on my part. I almost died there. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay, fine. I'll do this first. <laughs> and then I'll do this. It was just a mask? I thought there was a box. No, this is not Crash 4. Yeah, Crash 4 is the one which has the boxes hidden in, like, the invisible areas when it's kind of, like, annoying. As much as I like it, Crash 4 has some weird designs. No? Wait, what's happening? Someone texting me. Who's texting me? Why? Why are you bothering me, people? Wait. Okay, now. Nothing important. Okay. Tomorrow I'm having a night meeting, so... Oh my god, really? Fuck you. Oh, oh. 
Let's start the trap ones. No matter. Okay. All three. Good. I was foolish enough to expect that, to be fair. Stop it! The middle one opens. Yep. Yeah. And then all three and close all of three. There we go. Okay. That one. That one. Yeah, those. Are, that's a trap one as well. Oh, another checkpoint box. That's kind. Yeah. These platforming challenges are a bit too tight. I do like the fire. Um, I mean, the graphics of it. Very stylized, but still nice. Good. 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 And there we go. No, no. Honestly, the pain is real. Ah, oh, fuck this. Why do they move? I know why they move so slow, but they could have been a bit faster. I'm the crash expert. Ignore the previous deaths, by the way. Because they do show my greatness as the Crash Bandicoot player. No matter. It's still fun. Good. Good. There we go. No hidden boxes, only this one. Wait, what, 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 what? Nah, nothing. There we go. Oh, you sneaky beaky trying to throw me off, aren't you? There's nothing in there, except the checkpoint box. Okay, that was obviously a trap, but we didn't fall for it, so at least that's good on us. See? We got two more lives. Precisely the amount that we lost. Minus one. We're still in net negative of the level, uh, not levels, but like, lives lost. But in general, I think we're fine. Okay. No, 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 you bitch. Fire. Fucking bullshit. Now there's nothing above, so we can really destroy that box. Ah, I hate this. I hate this so much. There we go. Okay, we go up here. Yeah, in the second game, there's much less of this bullshit. I see. I need to call this one close. There we go. There's also a second mask here, which I've seen from the side. We have 30 out of 90 boxes. That is exactly the number. That is very sufficient. Bye bye. Yeah, you can kind of see the, th the third island in the background with the like castle. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Ah, suck a cock. Wait, this level has Neocortex bonus? That's not good. I mean, I don't think this is the special color crystal, but it might be. I hope it's not. Oh no, I hope it's not. Oh, you sneaky little Dr. Cortex symbol. Oh, we have both. Okay, so it's pretty much guaranteed. Yeah, I think we can't get the gem of, on this level. I think it's one of the colored ones. I think this is the yellow one. Because it looked normal on the menu, but it is not normal. Hmm, all the bats. Uh, bye bye. Okay. That was a trap. You have another life. Good. Second toner. No, I'm just gonna check the pattern first. All four. Good. Good. We're doing great so far, I think. There. There. Ok, 
Okay, we're going down here. And there's a life there. Oh, no. There's the third one. Oh. There it is. You sneaky little... No, no, I'll wait. I'll wait. I will not be hasty. I almost fucking fell. Good. Teleport away. And I think that this unlocks a secret level, if I believe correctly. You get like a key. Oh no. I fucked up. No, I didn't. I was very close. Ah, oh, fuck me. Well, at least bonuses, lives don't count. And you get to repeat them as many times. Good. Oh, fuck. Please let us not take forever. By the way, where did Cortex get money for all this? All this, really? Look at this castle, it's massive. It's so massive that you can't see beyond the black darkness. Very great. Perhaps this is the attempt that will fully make us... Okay, that was extremely dumb and courageous at the same time. Oh, we got all of them now. Oh, the key! Okay, 23 boxes. I think we can get all of them in this level. It's just the problem is we won't be getting the gem. I'm sure of it. Sunset Vista is one of those magic little rant levels. Yep. Okay, all three tokens, so... Thorna bonus is quite close. Yep, it's here. Honestly, I'll be happy if we get all the boxes. I don't care about the gem. I'll just prove to myself that I'm a cool dude who can get all of the boxes and this particular level. Okay. Great 16. Exactly the number we wanted. Yep. Yeah, we are definitely getting all the boxes of this level. There's only nine boxes left, so that means we're also quite close to the ending of this level. Oh, tight platforming. The, the only problem is I can't complain about the controls of these games because they're actually kind of good. That felt painful. Like, seeing all that progress gone reminds me of the uh, mountain climbing game. If I, I, Getting over it, yeah, by, Ted, uh, by Bennett Ford or whatever his name is. Honestly, a terrible game. I cannot play that. I'm very prone to anger. I'm very quickly prone to anger as a gamer. That game just enjoys making you extremely infuriated. Are you- Fuck! Suck! Suck! I want someone dead. Yeah, eight boxes and those are at the end if you've seen, if you've seen them. Yeah, that was definitely necessary. Okay, suck a cock. There you go. Bye-bye. Oh no, we do- Oh. I was such a downer. No, no, we've gotten all of them. That means six the gem. And one key. And I'm not sure whether we're gonna do the level, but I think we are. The special bonus one that we just unlocked. There's only two of them anyways. So that's the boss fight. And this is whole hog. Yeah, I'll do this. This is just a nice little... Yeah, it's one of these. Honestly... You can't call this animal abuse because it's an animal abusing another animal. And we're definitely here. I can't speed it up, so that's good. Ah. Oh, I remember these levels from the second and third game. 
we stand it up there. Mm -hmm. Okay, got all the boxes so far. What? I pressed the jump button. Why would you be so dumb? When am I supposed to press it? Also, I just realized that this is basically their town that we're going through. On a hog. Why does their town have so many fucking holes? I pressed it! I hate this hog now. It should not live. It should be dead. Like all of them. No matter what the animal activists say. I pressed it! What is your problem? Ah, oh, this is so annoying already. I mean, I'm getting immersed, I guess, with the screen this close to my face, but still. Okay, that... What? I... What? What do you want from me, game? I'm doing whatever you want, and this is not enough. I have 54 levels. I just... I just had a speech about how the levels so far have been net positive on our level count. You, you wouldn't you fucking cocksucker. That's what you are. There we go. Rotated screen a bit more. This is definitely the cause of the issue. And there we go. Good. I'm pressing the button. This is ridiculous. This is not normal. This is just dumb. Why is this so stupid? Please, elaborate. It's not normal. Oh my god, why? What am I supposed to do there? Jump later? What the fuck? This is just so dumb. I'm pressing it on the time. So dumb. How, why am I dying here? I'm doing what the game wants me to. I thought this is going to be an easy, quick little level. So much anger already. I'm not gonna scream. Okay. Finally. I would really appreciate a checkpoint right about now. Oh, thank God. Please save me. No more of that bullshit. Good. That was very close. Why? How? What? It's just badly programmed. Oh my God, that was almost me. Okay. Hmm. Okay, all the boxes so far. I kind of get it, I guess. With these bongo things. There we go. All the At least we've got all the boxes. And that pig just went into a wall. Ah, whatever. Well, this was definitely more painful than it was worth, but I at least got another gem, I guess. So, that's something. Yeah, Sunset Vista, we got the key. Another boss fight, beautiful. Oh my god, I remember the... N no, I'm not doing the next level of boxes-wise, that's very annoying to deal with. Exactly. Honestly, he, he fucking ripped though, but you, you're kind of skipping the... Leg day there, Koala Kong. I'm don't think. Oh, this one's gonna be easy. Okay, just do your thing. What a nice animation there.
Okay. Why are you gonna throw it, bitch? Throw it, I dare you. Bye bye. I love how exactly away from the. And I think you're dead. No, one more. I love how it's hidden where he gets the rocks from because they're spawning them there. That was a kind of a nice touch. I'll, I'll have to give it to them. Okay. I think this is the last rock that we need to deal with. Die. Bye bye. Actually, that was not in the original, how he got kind of taken from by that minecart. That's a nice detail. In the original, he just stays down, which is kind of weird. I mean, actually, it's not, considering... What would you do if you were hit with, like, multiple rocks in... in succession? So, yeah. Final island. As you can see, this is the end of the game. The blimp. There's actually not that many levels. This one section has a lot of them packed together. Like five at least. But the further you go, it just gets more spread out, I guess. Anyway. Heavy machinery. Yeah, this is the level that the boxes in this one are so annoying to get, so I'm just not gonna do it, honestly. I'm sorry. Because you have to, like, backtrack so many times. Oh no, this is a different one. I'm thinking of a different one. I'm thinking of a completely different one. I think it's the one after this. That one is very annoying. Not gonna lie. This one's fine. What have we got? Because it's like kind of divided, it's like it's like a tree structure, like a diamond structure, so every turn it gets divided into two. I think we can go this way. Yep, we can. Little sneaky beakies. Oh, embryo. That means there's gonna be embryo bonuses. Those are not cool. I can stand on the cold ones, not the hot ones. Ah, oh, fuck me. Oh, okay. I guess I get it just this way. Oh wait, no, that was a red herring, because if you didn't know about that particular part, you would just think, oh, yeah, I got the first one, instead of knowing that it's actually the second one. So that's why it's just freely available there. It teaches you that that one's there, but it doesn't... It also teaches you, once you get to the bonus, that sometimes there are... It basically lets you know about the hidden part without directly telling you about it. It's not ideal. You're not gonna fully know that it's there. But it's gonna have you experiment, I guess. Someone had to find it. I mean, at a time of no internet, the guides were quite limited. Oh my god, that was a very close jump there. Okay, is this the third or the second Tona ticket? Second, I think, yeah. Okay, ah! I fucked up, I fucked up. Well, I mean, 51, 52 lives, so that's successful, I guess. And the third one is, I think, also given, considering the embryo ones are... Uh, just like Tornas, the... Just like Tornas tokens, they're literally next to their warp... Next to their warp panels, so I'm sure I've gotten all of them. I know I didn't miss any of that is. I've just noticed what a terrible rotating gif that box icon on the HUD menu is. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. The thrilling gameplay, I have to say. There we go. Bye bye. So we at least have one life. Guaranteed. Two, probably. From this bonus. Yep. Just the sheer number of apples. Or, sorry, womp fruit. Just guarantees it. Oh my god. Why would it do that? Wait! Those treadmills are actually kind of interesting. How are they modeled? I need to check the one that's not by the fiery stuff. Oh, there we go. 
No, come on, don't be so stupid. Uh, I'm trying to figure out whether they're like physics based or is it just an animated kind of thing. I think it's animated. Who would do physics of that? That would be kind of pointless. Not gonna lie. This music is also kind of funky. Is this one... Is this a shortcut? I don't think it is. Oh. Very nice, isn't it? Ain't no boxes there. Bye bye. Just fruit. Okay. Where is the embryo statue kind of thing? That's what I'm interested in. I hope it's not in a secret section. That would be kind of bad for us. Okay. Oh, there it is. I remember this one being difficult, or was it the next one? I'm not sure. It's this one. Yeah, these are very annoying challenges. And Crash 4 got very funky with them. Like, in Crash 4, they dedicated an entire section of the game to this. It's called Flashbacks. Oh my god, those are very bad. Very difficult, but very annoying. And you have to unlock them in such a cryptic way as well. You have to essentially finish a level without dying once. Of no, you have to get to a specific point in the level without dying once and collect the cassette tape, I think. And... Some levels are fine, but to some levels to get there, it's just, oh my god. It's so difficult. They kind of tried to merge death routes with the bonuses from the first game. Which I can't say they did well. Yeah, I, I, have, a I have a lot to say about Crash 4's level design, so once we get to that, I'll be sure to point out every flaw that I think it has. Because I'm obviously such a good game developer that I know all about games and how many flaws there are. Speaking about game developers and flaws of the games, I've seen, this might be old news, which probably it is, Metroid Dread review by a specific game developer, David Jaff, who made game, uh, not Game of Thrones, God of War games, and frankly, <laughs> this is so dumb. Like, I won't say that Metroid Dread has, does not have certain sections that are kind of badly designed. I have one in mind, it's a bit further than when he've gotten. Yeah, this is the level that I'm not gonna collect all the boxes in. But the one he was complaining about was just so dumb. He got stuck in like the first 30 minutes of game and he said the game is uninteresting and not beautiful and all that because it's a 2D game and whatnot. And it's just fucking bullshit because when you look at the games, especially like Dread, like yeah, the initial part is kind of like boring because it's just caves, but then you go to the if you remember the forest air, fuck me, I'm not timing these well, aren't I? Yeah, see, and I would have to track, all, I would have to go all the way back. This entire section and divides again. It just keeps dividing. And it's just annoying. I don't want to deal with that. What's up here? I forgot. Oh, yeah. Is the introduction to shooting mechanic. And, as you can see, this question mark actually enables blocks in a completely different section of this level. So you need to like backtrack here, it's just annoying. Um, but back to the game, um, uh, Metroid Red. Yeah, it has beautiful sections of nature, later on, especially. It also has um, very nice uh, graphics of the mechanical stuff. It gets very nice, especially towards the end, because you're getting to the surface. It builds up tension in the scary parts. It's not supposed to be a nice game. It's supposed to be dread, like dreadful, I guess, in a sense. I just realized he'd never gotten to a first Emmy. That's oh fuck, suck a cop. That's how bad he was, because he didn't get to the first Emmy. So he was like, "What's the point of this game?" And he just had some shitty arguments. He was like saying. If you need like a student body, 
like a student work in university proposing that kind of level design, it would be very like unprofessional or something, and they would give you low points. And I'm like, but who gives a shit? Universities don't make like they can be for game development stuff. I'm going to a game development university. But it's not always good advice. Like, sometimes you need to listen to what the market wants. It's just such a dumb argument. Like, oh, this level design would get bad grade at the university. What the fuck? That, that, no, that's dumb. Anyway, just a pointless rambling on fucking dumb arguments that I've heard over this. But the section I think is badly designed in Metroid Drift, for example, is the first time you enter Qataris. You, there's like the elevator room and then there's the hallway and you can get to two rooms from that hallway and both of them are um, on fire and you can't at, at that point in the game you still don't have the suit I think it's the various various suit or something you still can't get over that lava because um, you don't have it right so it's too warm so the way you supposed to go is the other room right because that one is that one that one has no lava right no wrong that one also has lava so then fine i guess i'm not supposed to go there yet so you go back to the elevator room and then what i did into my gameplay i think it's even there is i spent a lot of time trying to backtrack luckily the game actually locks you out of the previous part you can't actually get there because there's like you try multiple routes but you can't get there and that's that was actually a funny part of his stream because he tried to get to previous areas, he's like, oh, I can get here, no, I can get here, no. The game actually does a good job locking you out of progression, so at least there's that. Ah, fuck me. Um, that being said, um, it's still not well designed. So what you're actually supposed to do in that section is, in that elevator room, on the left side, there's a wall that has no indication, right? Absolutely no indication. And you're supposed to shoot into that one. So that's why I think that's a badly designed. Now, you might think that looks very similar if you've seen that argument. You, that might be very similar to what he was complaining about. But the difference is that this section that he was complaining about, in particular, actually had indication that the wall is different. Also, it was very minute texture change. But that's beyond the point. There was also enemies that you would technically have to shoot at, revealing that hidden wall. Hidden wall. Also, the camera was pointed in a way where it, it looked unnatural for there to be any obstacle or any ceiling in that case. But in this section, it, 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 did, it wasn't really given any sort of special attention. No camera, no nothing. So yeah, that one particular section, I believe, is badly designed in Metroid Dread. There should have been some, like an, at least an enemy or something. Not, not saying there should be an arrow, but like, you know, some sort of an enemy or something to kind of... S lead you to shooting into that point anyway um, so yeah it has some sections that are kind of weirdly designed but that's not a lot and frankly it definitely isn't the one he was complaining about and it doesn't ruin the entire game like he proposed yeah it, it kind of brought up the argument in the, uh, in the community a lot about e difficulty in games and how we should be trying to make easier games and I'm a person who's not good at all games I'm not particularly bad, but I'm not good in many games, and that's because I don't want to spend too much time with them. I tried playing Dark Souls, I didn't get too far. Um, it's just difficult, but annoyingly difficult in a sense. And it's, it's probably not an experience for me. I might get back into it, it's just I have too many different games to dedicate that much time into one game. Actually, I'll correct myself, Dark Souls isn't difficult. Like, I could bear with the difficulty of the mechanical sense, that you have to dodge, you have to attack at the right time and all that. That's fun. But the unbelievably clumsy and annoying RPG mechanics it has, like you have to have these weapons, that much stuff, you only have this healing item, and the fact that apparently I've heard you can lock yourself out in the first few, like, before the final boss, you can genuinely lock yourself out without winning him because you can make bad choices in the sense of what you're leveling up and what you're not, is to me a bit of a bad design there. So if, if the game was a bit easier when it comes to the RPG stuff and like the points and whatnot, the leveling and staminas and whatever, I would not mind the difficulty in mechanics. It's just the mechanics make it a bit annoying, I'll be honest. 
Well, we might get all the boxes. Oh, we won't, because we died once, and this is one of those levels that, yeah, whatever. I know I said it last time, but this one is, it's true for this one. We're missing three boxes. Yeah, so that's my stance on Dark Souls difficulty. But anyway, he was basically complaining, complaining that games are difficult because they want to be difficult. And some games just need to be difficult. I would not be happy if I played a game that's supposed to be like Metroid Dread if it was easier. I would not be happy with that game. I think it doesn't suit it. Oh, wait, how did we get it? Didn't I die? Is this not a no death run? Maybe I didn't die. No, I didn't die after a checkpoint. The bonuses don't count. But oh, that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah, there's another toxic waste one. We'll see. So I'm actually interested, and I'm... Even Persona 5, when I played it, right? It was kind of difficult, in a sense, for me. And I played on normal first. And the entire game I managed to pull through, but at the end, it just gets so stupid that I was just like, I'm switching to easy for that particular section. Because you have to do so many battles like between each other and it's just the damage sponge kind of thing. And honestly to me that's kind of a bad design. Okay. So yeah, uh, in Persona 5 for example I don't think difficulty matters that much. I wouldn't want it to be easy because I mean again the game is supposed to be somewhat of a challenge. But some of the bosses are a bit too ridiculous, in a sense. Like, the stuff they want you to do. And the amount of health you're supposed to have. And the damage you do is so small that it's kind of... It's too much padding. Like, there's a difference between difficulty if something's difficult in a sense that it is difficult and something's difficult just because you have to do it for a very long time while evading annoying attacks and finding the strategy and just waiting. Those are two different difficulties that we need to talk about, and frankly, I do not like the second type. So this is a very funny level, fun level, kind of. Oh, it kind of telegraphs. Oh my god, okay, fuck you. Okay, this one bounces there. Bye-bye. I would really like for there to be at least one. Yeah, this is nice. It telegraphs it. Like, there's, pa there's patches on the ground. But it's not too obvious, I think. I guess we have all the boxes now. We might be able to get this a blue gem. Okay, so the end is actually maybe close. Enough. <gasps> what? I hate this so much. Okay, there is a mark. Fuck me. I could have gotten this gem. I don't want to replay the level. Nah, not really. But you died, yeah. Nearly perfect. I'm gonna get some tea. I have some tea. Mood. By the way, speaking about Dark Souls, how could I have forgotten about this game? Yeah, I don't think this game would be good if it was easier. All of the Crash Bandicoot games are fun, because the platforming isn't for dummies. That's one thing that Mario doesn't get right a lot of times, I think. How did I die there? I was behind the couch. I hit him! And you only do it when he moves? I think you can only do it then. You fucker! Okay, whatever. Okay.
that couch would be probably destroyed. Another one. No. No. You fucker. Also, a kid's game that had guns. This is the early PlayStation era. Yeah, proceeds to destroy everything. This is, by the way, a very annoying boss fight in CTR, which is the Crash Team Racing game. He does so so many annoying things, it, it took me forever to beat him. That's another thing, the Crash Team Racing is also a very difficult racing game. They did that right. So yeah, Crash Bandicoot is fun because of that difficulty. Oh, I remember this. This was the dumb part. Yeah, it was... Ah, beautiful level. This is the most, one of the most difficult levels in the entire game. So I get two each time, I guess. Okay, yeah, I get two. Yeah, definitely. I think we get two, yeah. Yeah, until I get to the checkpoint, those boxes don't count. I love how the developers slot, uh, like, were so... Fuck me so funny that they left you like one particular life there it's like haha you suck at this level why am i supposed to oh my god this fucking sucks well it's been good to know your lives why which direction i can't tell Fuck this level. This is also bad design in my opinion. Like the hidden kind of bullshit. Does it? Yeah, it's this way. There we go. Yeah, that should count as one life. Maybe one of the two that I just lost in this section. Yeah, the shadow is incredibly important here. You fucker. I needed that. I'm actually not sure whether I needed that, but I, I'm saying I did, so... Oh, there's turtles. Okay. I'm gonna do this. Ah! Okay. See, this is so... Necessarily difficult. Yeah, checkpoint. God bless. At least this level doesn't require the... Color jump level of precision. You fucker! I jumped! Mm -hmm. Might not be enough. Yeah. I hate waiting. I am a, I'm a very impatient person. And this is... This is definitely gonna not pay off. Okay. Waiting for that other turtle. Okay, good. Okay. Oh my god. This level is gonna be my nightmare. Yeah, this is where most of the YouTube... Oh my... This is... Why are they in sync? Why is this a sync thing? Why do they have to be in sync? Who made that happen? That was a very shitty decision there. Okay. Uh. Okay, the turtle needs to move. Okay, good. I've seen a lot of streamers struggle with, with this level in particular. Like, it is not unbeatable, but it is bullshit. I've tried to... When I played this game for the first time on PlayStation 1, uh, it was not a good time. Because of this level, I think. I gave up here. It was like a long, long time ago. I could beat it from them, but like still. Okay, we're gonna... Oh my god, I hate this hog. Was that really necessary there? Like, 
whatever. Oh, this fly. I hate flies. Why do they exist? Why does God punish us for having flies? Okay. Okay, there's that. There we go. Oh, I see what you did there. Mm -hmm. Bucker, sucker cock. This is unreal. Who built this bridge? And for what evil scheme? That was very close. That was also very close. This is also very close, but another checkpoint. Good. Yeah, the Tona bonus is a godsend. Especially because she's gonna act like a checkpoint. Good. Even the bonuses are getting annoying. Oh no. Okay, fuck it. Whatever. This doesn't count for lives, so it's fine. It's not like, you know... I'm getting absolutely pulverized. Done. Yeah, I need to be very... Fuck me, I probably fucked myself over. Yeah, I did. Oh, this is so annoying. You need to plan ahead with these boxes. How many? Yeah, I should be able to get the gem for this level, though. If I do this correctly. Because most of the boxes of this level are literally stuck on that bridge. Okay. Oh, that's how we do it, yep. Um... Ah! Fuck a cock. Okay. I'm surprised how well the internet is running. Maybe I finally fixed it. It took so many different things to do. But I think it's working fine now. It's very stable. Well... As stable as the internet in UK can be. Fuck, fuck, fuck a cocksucker. I can say those words, okay? I have the gay card, so it's fine. I actually do have it though, so... Stop. I hope I won't be cancelled for that particular stance statement, but whatever. No one even knows my Twitter account. My Twitter account is so fucking useless. It's literally there only so I can snoop on other people's drama. I don't even... Sometimes I, I used to type in two things there, but like that's it. I don't find any value in Twitter for that matter. I have also a Facebook account, but like that's because in my country it's like a really big thing. Yeah, a lot of Americans are like, yeah, Facebook is dead. Oh, fuck me. It kind of scared me. No, he's just floating in the air. Okay, I guess that's a thing. Why is that a thing? I absolutely hate the fact that it's a thing. Mm hmm There we go. And the end of the level and all boxes. Beautiful. Anyway, yeah, people in a lot of countries still use Facebook. Like, young people. It's surprising, but they do. They also use Instagram, so that doesn't count. TikTok is so popular everywhere. I hate TikTok. Oh my god. Like, the younger family members... All are downloading it. We're talking like 12, 13. And not gonna lie, I'm one of those cousins who they're gonna hate because I'm trying to warn their parents about the problems with TikTok. Specifically for girls. Because, I mean, we all know that TikTok is not the safest place on this planet. It's it's fun to have uh, uh, discussions with, like, parent, parental figures in my family now. Especially about technology, because, I mean, they're not the youngest people, and they don't know fully, are, are not fully aware. And there's a lot of documentaries that portray social media as the biggest fucking evil on this planet, right? There's this one particular one where Facebook was, like, the big villain, collecting all the data. And I'm not protecting Mark Zuckerberg, right? But it's, it's just too much. 
Like, it's too extreme in the other direction as well, the way they portray these, the social media about how it's like stealing your information and all that. I don't think it's the most, you know, fair and unbiased way of looking at things. That's the best way of putting it. But someone's not interested in that, so maybe I should be considering that as well. Yeah, this is one of the hardest levels as well, but this is not the hard one. There is a level called Slippery... Uh, slippery... No, S Stormy Ascent. And that's the DLC level, and which is basically this one. And it was so difficult that it actually got cut from the original. Yeah, it got... There was a level that was too difficult for this game to fucking cut it. After that bridge level, by the way. Or the... Uh, some other stuff. Anyway, my point being... Um, I am that cousin, so yeah, TikTok I'm not recommending for any, like, children. And... Yeah, I'm definitely not getting the colored gem on this one. Yeah, this is the colored gem level, by the way, so you have to beat this one first try. With collecting all the fucking boxes. To get the color gem. It was the hardest challenge in this game, but in my opinion. Oh my god, these fucking platforms. They're moving in such an, an, an inorganic way. And I know for a fact that a lot of young kids use TikTok and... Actually, I'm not sure what I think about this. Because TikTok and all the social media make a lot of kids mature a bit more fast. Like, kids today, or even when I was young, know a lot more concepts much quicker than our parents used to. Like, I'm talking about sexual education and stuff like that. I'm not necessarily sure whether I'm all for or against that. I just find it very interesting. And I think... Now, especially young girls, once they get into TikTok, like at 12, they get exposed to so much stuff. Like, you know, the sexual dances, suggestive movements, whatnot. Because let's be honest, sex sells, right? I'm not saying the 12-year-old girls are doing sexy things or anything, but... But the older teenagers are doing that, especially uh, women. And the problem with that is that the young girls obviously do what the older women do. Because, I mean, that's how humans work, right? And they get taught these, like, suggestive movements, whatever. Funny trends and whatnot. I know this is not a TikTok thing. Like, for example, um, what was that move? Twerking, yeah, twerking. That was a big thing before. That's not a TikTok thing, I know, but like, a lot of young girls were doing twerking, right? Which is, in its nature, a sexually powered movement. It's basically emphasizing your butt or ass, which, as we all know, is a very big thing for sexually inspired people, men specifically. Um, I know I'm trying to say, uh, talk in a very particular way, that's why my words are not as smooth and why my speech is very kind of not organic as well. Because I'm, I believe I'm treading on very thin ice with this, or at least I think so. Anyway, the point is, um, they do this, these movements and they get shown this kind of side of interactions with humans, right? So I don't understand that when TikTok women who are older and who have every right to do that kind of bullshit, I still think it's dumb and stupid, but they can do it since they're over like the age limit of whatever. I, and I don't necessarily mean 18, I just mean age of maturity, whatever that may, may be for each individual person. Is they do the moves, they do the sexual suggestion, whatever, right? If they decide to sell themselves that way, fine, whatever. Who am I to judge them? But what's happening is these girls do that, obviously because they get inspired, and now we're wondering why there's such a rampant problem with pedophiles on these platforms. Seriously? Is that even a question? Like, let's be honest, <laughs> these platforms are literally built on top of that, and I think it's a natural response that there's a lot of pedophiles and predators on these apps. It's like a natural thing in my eyes that we've built this environment for that particular breed of people to thrive. So yes, I think that was inevitable, in fact. And I also think that whatever you do, you cannot stop it. I also have very specific views on ped pedophilia. 
I don't mean that I support it, no, I don't. Uh, I don't even think it's morally correct, but I understand that sometimes it's not necessarily, at least in my opinion, it's not necessarily a choice of the person to be hardwired that way. It is absolutely their choice to uh, act on their sexual drives. That is their choice, but the act of feeling is not unfortunately their fault in my opinion. Fuck me, I'm dying in this level so... I didn't even get to the first checkpoint. I'm rambling on. It's so annoying. Boy. Yeah, imagine this level being even more hard and... Yeah, whatever. Anyway, it's an interesting topic and I find it very interesting. And I think that also links heavily with the depression rates, especially in women. Not to say that men don't feel depressed. They, there's definitely that. There's also the body image stuff for men, which is like the, you know, muscular kind of bodies and all that. And honestly, I think I suffer from it as well in a very clear and obvious way in my mind. Now, I don't think I'm in a very dangerous zone, but I definitely see myself fulfilling some and behaving in ways that are not healthy. And frankly, I'm trying to do something against it, but it's not always working. There we go. And knowing for a fact that I'm feeling this right, and I'm fully aware of it at least, there are some people who are not aware of that. So we have these people portraying something and we may call it unrealistic beauty standards for both men and women i call it more so very specific beauty standards that just make the lives of these people more miserable so naturally the depression rates are going to be higher in my opinion and we might think oh it's so vain when people think about themselves right no matter how beautiful they are and whatnot I always do that early but in our society, particularly, or not even society, just in overall, our species, beauty is a very valued thing. Like, I would say that above anything else, like, you can say that racism is a thing, you can say that sexism is a thing, but honestly, I think, even, they, even though these are still problems that happen, I still think that beauty bias is one of the worst ones of all. Because that one is so clear, it's not punishable, it's very obvious, and it's very real. Especially with job markets and like partners and all that. And yes, if you are more beautiful, you are going to be more successful in life. Unfortunate as that may be, it's the facts. And honestly, I think that's one thing that we're hardwired by biology to kind of value. So that being connected with the TikTok and idealized body standards and all that creates an important sense of self-worth that if you are not beautiful enough, so to say, you suffer not only because you compare yourself to others, but you also suffer because if that is true, and it might not be true, but if that is also true, then you also are very much unprivileged in many different ways. So it sucks both ways. So, no wonder, I'm just saying, no wonder people are actually being depressed on that. Not all of them, of course. There are different reasons for being, like, people having depression. Some of which are not necessarily connected to social media per se. But a lot of depression that is in young people is connected to social media. There's obviously family issues, parental control and stuff like that, but, you know. Oh, fuck me. Oh, where is the last checkpoint? Okay, it's here. Great. Quite ways ahead. It's definitely some issues that people don't talk about a lot in the... I, can, I mean, they do talk about them a lot in a sense that they mention them. But I don't think they talk about them in a more... Or of a... Not deep, but rather hindsight kind of view. Point of view. How do you... Can, can you just kill someone? I... I why? Why must this be so fucking annoying? Dreadful even. Okay, good. Okay, let's go. It's definitely issues that people don't talk about. Oh yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, don't talk about with a lot of hindsight. With that, They are very biased. They tend to gravitate towards single point of view and that's why i have movies of uh facebook bad 
uh, social media bad, not used, young people sad. It's kind of the view that you're getting, which is a very simplistic, kind of a straw man way of looking at the things. And looking at the actual problem of stuff. Okay. It's just my phone provider sent me an email. Internet provider, whatever. I hate them so much, but I've got a free month from them. So I'm happy for that. Not the main internet, it's just my phone. Because I have referred a friend to them. Okay. 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 Suck a cock. Yeah, this is the annoying one. Kind of down, kind of a sad topic to talk about, honestly. It's just I thought about it a lot lately. And being aware of these issues is not going to help you solve them, honestly, which is the saddest thing. Because as I've mentioned before, I do believe that I suffer from these issues, especially the body image one. But it's definitely not going to help me in any meaningful way, I believe at least. Oh, I, that's how I'm supposed to do it. Okay. At least my body image issues are something I can work on. Like, I can actually achieve what I want, right? For now, hopefully, and I'll stay in that sense. Sensible, kind of... Hopeful matter. That's what I hope, at least. But I can't say that for some ladies. Oh my god, why is this a thing? If I could slide. Yeah, this game doesn't have slide and it's very annoying because of that. I'm gonna change the topic, honestly. I I've gotten myself a bit too serious and sad. There's so many fun things people can talk about. Like, topic-wise. The ways... I and it's. I personally believe that uh, you need to... Like, people need to read a lot more. As in, not necessarily books. And not necessarily read at some time. I meant it more, they need to explore and be more curious. I find it that a lot of people are just not curious anymore, and I find it very sad. Well, that's how I'm supposed to do it. Um, I see it a lot, because people tend to, and this is again, very non-specific, tend to not really look into... Beautiful, I died literally after that. Are not really interested in stuff that is not necessarily in their domain. Which I find very sad, because I think, as creatures and as humans, we should be interested in most of the things. And I find it very helpful, though, because I'm trying to learn as many things in different fields as possible. It really helps with conversations, and with, like, talking with people about stuff. Oh, wait. I'm actually gonna get that. Oh, I hate you so much! Like, for example, I'm studying game development, right? A lot of people don't think that's a serious or like an actual prosperous job still, right? especially the older generation, because he's not a doctor and not a lawyer and all that. And fine, I know stuff about computers, right? But I should, I'm doing game development, but as I'm, as the game developer, I should also be interested in some other things, like for example, game design, level design, product design, visual design, music production, and all of that. Only just so I could know better how to do my job. Yeah, I can't get the jump because I died. Um, but that's not all. I'm also interested in uh, politics, right? But not necessarily in the same way as you would expect. Like, oh, I'm interested in libertarian politics. Or I'm interested in the socialist politics. Or I'm interested only in that side I'm following or agreeing with. No. I'm interested in politics in general, like the ideas that people had, how they worked out, how they didn't. And I'm open to listening to many different ideas. Many times I admit weaknesses of the proposals I have. Like, for example, I'm usually more capitalist in a sense. I believe that capitalism is a better system overall. But I'm not going to say that it does not have its shortcomings. And I'm not going to fight tooth and nail to say that it has no flaws and it's the best system ever. No, it's not. It's just better than the other one, in my opinion. I also see some value in, say, social socialism, even though I would not want it. But it's... you understand? It's like I'm interested in kind of philosophy, politics, and thought like that. 
I'm also interested in music in a way that not only for game music, but like rather the mathematics behind it. Like you have patterns, you have uh, specific sections to music, how each song is really built and you can see definite really mathematical equations that you can apply and kind of build music out of that. There's also uh, exercise, right? I'm very interested in healthy lifestyle living and all that, food science and stuff like that. I'm also very interested in science in general, right? Because I believe that it is important to know how the world works to a certain extent, right? I'm also interested in mathematics. See, it's 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 I'm interested in a lot of things. I'm also interested in farming in a sense. Like, how is stuff farmed? What do you need to do? Like, the fertilization of grass... Uh, oh, I'm missing three boxes. Oh, whatever. Like, fertilization of ground, different types of ground and all that. It's very interesting if you think about it. How some stuff can grow in some land, but some cannot. Why is there rich areas? Why is there poor areas? Oh, I mean food-wise. Uh, how you can cultivate a desert, for example. And it's completely different. And I think... I basically try to... Or even... Oh, sorry. I'm not going to add one more. Even cooking. Cooking is also very interesting to me because you get to use different combinations. I love to try cooking in a sense that I don't follow recipes. I don't know that many recipes. I, in fact, I only know the basics. But I know that if I have meat, right, I can cook it. I have spices. I have tomato base. I can just combine those into some stuff and you can make some sort of a chili kind of meal. I like to call them gumbo, but you know. So it's an experimentation in a sense, and you know that some things are working together well and some are not. And in that sense, it's very interesting. Different recipes of different countries, cultures, and all that. So, in a sense, I'm very curious and very interested in a lot of things. And I think there are a lot of people like me, I see it happen a lot, but usually they tend to be smaller and younger, rather. At some point, people tend to stop being interested in things. Like, they just say, ah, fine, I don't need to know this, someone else does, and all that. And I think that's such a shame. Oh my god, fuck you. Um, it's that curiosity that really drives forward a lot of my ideals as a, like, you know, life and all that. And not seeing people share that, just people being content with not knowing something, or rather, not not knowing something, but not even trying to understand something. It's kind of sad, in a way. And I think that is not really helpful to them, particularly. I think the vaccination discussion, for example, causes, or is a nice reflection of this, right? Some people believe that vaccinations cause autism, they don't want to vaccinate and all that. It's dumb. Because they get stuck on that one perspective, and they never are willing to actually explore the other one. In a lot of sense, there are a lot of people who also are like, vaccination is going to save lives, Every time vaccination happens, it's good, whatever, blah, 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 right? No, I don't, th I don't think that's a healthy way of thinking either. For example, when the vaccine for uh, for the evil thing, I'm not sure what I can say without getting demonetized. When the vaccine for evil thing came, I was kind of skeptical as well. Not in a sense that I don't want to get vaccinated, but I was like, how can something be, you know, found this quickly with all the testings and whatever required? And... I understand it in a lot of ways. It is experimentation. I personally believe that they've literally made the vaccine and unfortunately we live in times where we have to get ourselves, you know, vaccinated to test it out and see whether it does or does not do something. It's unfortunate, but it's the only way forward. I'm not gonna say that it's the holy savior or whatever, right? Yeah, it does help. I think that getting vaccinated is the only way to kill the virus. But I'm not gonna say that there you should not have any concerns because it's the medical whatever industry that builds these vaccines. I think that's a dumb way of looking at things. And a lot of people take that for granted. They're like, no, vaccines save lives, whatever, right? I'm like, do they though? I will get vaccinated. Oh my god, I hate these. I hate these so much. I, I just don't know. It's, it seems to me that people are really willing to just accept any information that favors their worldview without any critical thought to it, right? I'm usually that annoying person in family gatherings when someone says like, Oh, a lot of people are doing this! And I'm like, where? how do you know this? 
I'm that person who will put that information to scrutiny, regardless of how sound it sounds. Like, unless I find it reasonable to accept that information, I will point out that that's not knowable or that's some dumb st stuff. For example, my dad loves to bring those uh, arguments about how young generation is more lazy and something like that. And I'm like, okay, what are you basing that on? And he says, oh, less work, for hours. I'm like, okay, where do you have that data from? Is that your personal experience or is it like an actual thing? I will be that annoying person, unfortunately, because if you don't put things up to scrutiny, you can't then really... How oh, is this a fucking... I hate this. Yeah. Um, and if you don't do that, people will just easily accept it. I think it's very important to have a, a lot of critical thought in today's age, especially. There's a lot of fake news. A lot of people who are in who have a high interest i hate this i hate the fact that i can't see my shadow i hate the fact that the controls are kind of wonky i'm just complaining because i'm losing um a lot of people just read the first article title and all that right my mom for example sent me an article about something i'm not sure what it was it was some elon musk tech bullshit propaganda about how robots are scary and ai is gonna kill us all right and some error happened killing like some Robots killed whatever how many people in this factory or whatnot. That was literally just the title of the article and I was like, hmm, that seems very suspicious because I never heard of it anywhere else and cross-referencing it on Google kind of doesn't give you many good results. So I opened the article and read like a few lines of it and it turns out that it's that the robot has that potential. Like it has a potential to do it, but it just it didn't do it. It just has a potential to do it. But you know, since it's sensationalized articles and whatnot. Just kind of ruins the information flow and a lot of people are just taking information for granted today and unfortunately this is something that you need to get taught in school but why would you get taught that in school if if you're gonna get consp conspiratorial people in power want, want to keep you dumb right yeah i think we're not we were not ready for internet in a lot of ways as a species Oh my god. Oh, kill yourself. And we're paying a high price for it. Like, with the fake news and all that. I really can't complain about people writing fake news. Like, who wouldn't use that? That's a perfect way to achieve your goals. Just write some fake news. Especially politically. Like, international politics. You can't be mad, because that, it's another way of fighting. We've literally banned every other way of fighting because it's like improper warfare and whatnot. Y you are using everything. There are no rules. We get stuck on the fact that we have rules. I find it so hilarious because no, war and stuff like that has no rules. Unfortunate as it may be, it's a fact. Oh, I'm not getting the Cortex bonus. It's kind of sad, but not really. So yeah, you need to be prepared in a way that you need to read everything with scrutiny cross-check everything, and if something sounds too good to be true or too dumb to be true, check it. You literally have the world's most powerful information network at your fingertips as a way on your phone. Use it. Use that to... I'm not even sure why I'm collecting all the boxes at this point. I guess it's fun. But people are just too lazy. Including myself. I'm not always cross-checking everything. I know I should be, but I'm not always doing that. Especially people like, you know, political speakers and all that. That's always just puts me. That's also the way I look at politics. Like, I don't necessarily side with any of the sides. Not because I'm that person who's like, oh, no one's right because all the politicians are corrupted. No, it just, I can see value in both perspectives. I'm waiting for that to happen. I guess, again, as I've said, we're not ready for internet and we're paying a high price for it. And I think it's a lot of things are connected to it, especially with the anti-vaccination thing, anti-mask, the government controls and all that shit. Oh my god, really? How many boxes is that? Fuck me, that's a lot. No matter, we're getting close to the end of the game anyway. 
So if anyone is watching this, even this far, the only thing I would say to you, be curious. Try to understand things that you would normally not understand. It not only helps your own kind of worldview grow, but it helps you be interesting to other people, especially when you have to converse with them. Not in a smart ass kind of way that, oh, I know about this, but rather listen to them and talk to them about things that you might n not have known a lot of about before, but you can actually now talk with them. Because knowing a lot of things, surprisingly, but not knowing like in a factual way, but like rather being interested in a lot of things allows you to connect with a lot of different people. And I think that's very important. This is the trap ones. I remember this. And I think that's what a lot of people who have good networking do. They just know a lot of things. Or at least pretend to know a lot of things. Or rather be interested in a lot of things. Like for example, I'm terrible at fishing. But if I'm gonna be talking with my granddad about fishing, I'm not gonna pretend like, oh this is boring, I'm not interested. No, I'm gonna be interested in how he does it, or what are the tricks. Like, why is he using that type of bait for that kind of fish? Does it work? Is there ways that some groups do it differently? Why do they do it differently? Do they have better results? Like, it's 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 fun. You can make anything fun if you're interested in it. And you can make anything interested if you're curious about it. I think that's one thing that I've learned in high school when I went to, like, a boarding school in Japan. Uh... I was like a UWC school and UWC, IB diploma, all of that is useful in a sense. But I think more useful was the fact that I've gotten to learn how to be more curious about things and how to explore many different things. It's much more valuable to me now than diplomas, the grades and all that. And all the people don't have that outlook, especially people who actually are in school, me included. I really kind of, not really, at one point I stopped caring, but I did care a lot about grades when I was younger, especially in school. And later, and everyone was telling me, like all the adults was like, oh, grades aren't everything and whatnot. And to be fair, my parents, well, were kind of strict about it in a lot of ways. So that's one reason why I've been caring about grades. But after some time, I realized this is pointless. Why would I care about this? I need to pass. That's all I need to do, even in life. Yeah, what happens if I don't get the best grade? Well, I don't get to the, let's say, Ivy League University, whatever, right? I'm a person who doesn't value anything that this... I mean, okay, let me rephrase that. I'm a person who would value like an Ivy League or kind of like that kind of university if I had enough time or whatever to get into it. But I don't value it to that point to dedicate my entire life to get there. Because I don't think it matters that much. Especially after some time in your life. Like, who is asking where you studied at, in a university after your second job? Literally only like if you did something that requires university. Like law and medicine. And if you do academic work. That's the only time it matters. Otherwise, it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, it's a nice thing to say to people, oh, I went to Harvard, oh, it's nice, I went to like Yale and what other bullshit have you. But it's not really... Oh, I hate this. But it's not really something that you should care about to the point of dedicating your entire life of free time that you have for. Because odds are, like many of other people, you're gonna end up just having a normal job and you're not gonna have a lot of time for anything. So... You should use that free time that you have during university and all that, uh, university or school, to explore different things. And luckily, I started thinking like a way uh, earlier than I would want to because I don't know what I would do if I started thinking about this when I would be 40, when I would be stuck in a job. And not having time for anything I like. That would be terrible. That would be sort of a kind of disappointing way of living, in my opinion. I don't know why I keep returning to these kinds of deep topics. I guess I'm just thinking about it a lot lately. I'm not even sure why. Okay. Okay. I'm just breezing through the- oh my god. I'm just breezing through this game, honestly. I don't even remember beating the levels before. There's a crate on. 
Yeah, you can see that this game is basically an aut autopilot for me. It's not that it's easy, it's just... I've played it already and I know the mechanics to the point where I can just autopilot it. I don't remember the level before this. Oh no, I do now. It's the temple one. Under yeah, I do remember levels. Yeah, we're getting close to the end though. Um, maybe I'll do one more level, I think. I mean, no, there's Embryo, there's one more level, and then that's it, I think. Yeah, there's only one more level, and then there's the final boss. Not including this one, this is just the boss. Okay, I can't spin them, I have to jump on them. It's kind of sad that there's no indication for that. It has a lot of lives for a boss fight, but to be honest, you get like quite. Oh, he's there. I fucking wasn't paying attention. Okay, now I'm paying attention. Oh, the background water is not on the. It looks like it's high enough, but it actually isn't. Like, at this floor of the tower is not that high. I don't, I'm not sure whether I'm making myself clear. Um, the islands behind you aren't far away, in the in the window, aren't far away, they're just small. Kind of give that image. The water also has the texture scaled down to look that it's like high enough. But rather than that, it's just... It's just scaled down textures. And kind of bent to kind of give that uh, curvature look. I mean, good techniques, honestly. You wouldn't need anything more special for this. It's just I've noticed that. That's all I wanted to say by that. Oh my god, how- wait, what the fuck did that see? I only had one life left, no less. How is there a storm? It's a day- it's like- ugh. I swear to god, I jumped there. Okay, fuck you. There we go, bye bye. <laughs> Honestly, this character is kind of creepy, especially in the later games. I need to be careful with this, honestly. Okay, he throws three of them, I think. No. Okay, you kind of annoy me now. Mm, I almost fucking fell for a strap! I don't know why I think this boss is difficult. It genuinely isn't. Oh, okay, he does this now. Oh, whoa! Look at his body physique. No! No, 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 no! Mm. Okay, good. Okay, do your th do your worst. Good. Come here, you bitch. Oh my god, the camera! Why does it have to do the shaky cam? That's the worst thing. That makes that fight that much more difficult, honestly. It's not in the original, I don't think there was the shaky cam. Maybe there was. Uh, how? Fucking piece of shit, literally. Green piece of vomit. Fuck you. Goodbye. Well, they just have the mask now. You piece of shit! What is your hitbox? No, 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 no. You fucker, you thought you can get me. Okay, one, two, three. Three. He's gonna do that.
Okay, good. Me up. He's doing the crazy thing now. Why is everyone in these games skipping leg day? Is that like a thing? Like his fucking upper body is so small, but the bottom... Like it's just not well developed at all. Also, how can those legs support that weight? I'm just looking too deep into this, aren't I? Yeah, you can kind of see it now, the islands and the texture of the water. Usually this approach is amazing if you have a fixed camera. But once the parallax happens, you can it breaks the illusion. Unless you make it move along with the camera to not break that illusion, then it works. But it's a lot of programming that you would need. No, not a lot, but it's like something you would need to add to your programming of the particular thing. Oh, this level. I remember this. This one was very annoying. Put the, all the boxes on. Yep. This is the hardest one, I think. It's not... It's, it's hard, but it's not the hardest level, definitely. You fucker, why can't I spin? Why are these unspinnable enemies a thing? This game is not supposed to be jump to jumping game. This is supposed to be a spinny game. In my native language... Fucker. In my native language, the word platformer, or rather the genre platformer, is, is translated as a jumping game. So, I guess I'm wrong on that then, but in the English name of platformers, a platformer suggests platforms. I'm too late with this. I have to wait one more cycle. So annoying. I was close. Okay. I know that one of them is gonna have an TNT in it. I'm sure of it. Yes. Fucking bullshit. That's a trap. I hate those kinds of traps. Okay, Tana, save me. Be the checkpoint I need in these dire times. Both only. Good. It's so scary. I need to get to the. How? I mean. Is that really necessary? Is there something above? Okay, 5, 8, 9, 10. Yes, it is. Fuck you. Yeah, I have to jump on the top one without breaking it because there's two boxes above it. I'm sure of it. No! Fuck her. Not gonna lie, I hate these kinds of challenges where you have only one chance or you have to die. Because it's just so annoying. Let's look at the gamer. Yep. See? I told you, two boxes. To be fair, it wasn't that much of a difficult math. Problem, but still. One, two, three, four, five. 11, 12. Why does he always steal her? I don't think Cortex really wants Tona. He's not that interested in her. <sighs> that was so dumb. I jumped though. Is there a delay of some sort? No, there isn't. I'm sure there isn't. I want a TV even closer. I'm a person... Oh my god, I didn't... I wasn't paying attention, that was my fault. Okay. There we go. I like the screams and the fact that they are very long. And it feels pleasurable. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, that timing worked out. Oh, you fucker, you think you're smart, aren't you? Ah, a trap? Mm hmm. Your electricity stuff. Okay. Terrible sounds. I think they're robotic, though. So we don't have to worry about the murder. Ah, sadness. That's That hits bad. Okay. These lab assistants are just so dumb. Bye bye. Oh, you sucker. You thought you could get me. Didn't you? Three more crates. I swear to god I missed them. <gasps> you... <laughs> Definitely painful. Especially the checkpoint system. Do your stuff. Bye. Bye. Okay, good. Okay. Nah. Okay. Yes. Um, oh my god, this is one of those special gems, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, whatever. I got all the boxes. I know I died. Fuck you. I tried so hard, no less. Okay, I think this was the last level. Now we're going to go to the final boss. Yeah, there is something in front of it, but uh, this is just nothing. Let's see if we have all the boxes. If you have all the colored gems, then you can go to this one. But... Or rather, all the gems. We don't have all the gems, so I guess we're just finishing this. That, that gives you an alternate ending, which, by the way, is not canon. So there's that. And Dr. Neocortex. We're basically at the end of the game. Yeah, I don't like how close the camera is here. How is the entire castle on fire? Okay, the green ones are bad, or rather good ones. How? I thought it's only on 2D plane. In oh, whatever. Okay. I like how this scenery rotates. It's very... Yeah, these blue ones are kind of annoying, not gonna lie. I also like the Cortex theme. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, I like the scenery of the two islands, you know, being in the background. Bye-bye. Honestly, why are you even sending me the green ones? This is like some sort of a random discharge. Why would you ever do that? Fucking dummy. Yeah. And he falls to his doom. Or does he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is the official ending. I mean the canon ending in the Crash Bandicoot lore. Don't get it confused. Yeah, this. And Torna is saved. There we go. And that's the first game. I'm just gonna skip the credits, honestly. I, I know. So the next time I'm gonna stream...
this particular trilogy, we're gonna get to the second game, and I might do all the boxes there, because the game has less levels than the first one, and they kind of compensated with the boxes. I like the clouds. I'm not sure how they did them. I think it's just part uh, Yeah, they just seem to be uh, the 2D billboards kind of stacked on top of each other to make give the illusion of clouds. But it's still nicely done. Not gonna lie. Anyway, there's... Oh, oh I forgot. Ah, oh, there's this level. Mm -hmm. Not today, but I might start the next stream. If I do crash again, I'll do Stormy Ascent. I'll do it before the second game. And then we'll see what happens after that. Oh well. I think it's time to... Do this. Yep. As you can see, uh, the map is still active. Thank you if you watched. Thank you for watching. If you watch later, like my on my YouTube channel or something, thank you for that as well. I think... This was definitely fun. Um, I'm looking forward to playing more games. It's definitely an idea that the idea that I've been talking about before the split playthroughs, where it's not a full playthrough, but it's like some sections of it. I will definitely play around with that idea, not for these kinds of games, but for bigger games like say Breath of the Wild or something. You know, stuff like that. Stuff that's way too long to be streamed for long periods of times. Or maybe I'll just do a day stream sometime. Or day for me, you know. It's always nice somewhere, as I say. With that being said, thank you for watching. Enjoy and hope to see you or hear you in the next one. As the eloquent Mario would say, So long, Gigi Bowser.